thank you. You are rescued our life. Father, we thank you. The Bible said our soul is as clear as a bird out of the snare of the fowler. The snare is broken and we are escaped. The Lord is our rescuer. Yeshua Hamashiach. He has come so that we may have life and have it even more abundantly. Father, we thank you. Thank you Lord. Indeed, you have rescued our life. You have rescued the church. You have rescued our families. Father, we thank you. Thank you Lord. You know that we are tired of the status quo. And you are not going down to perfect everything to send your church. <laughs> but I will thank you for these renditions. Our response is hallelujah. Yes. For the Lord God of the potent liveth. He reigned above situation and circumstances. Yes. Father, we thank you. Thank you we exalt your holy name. For in Jesus' name, we are praying. Amen. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Amen. If you are here, and you know, you believe that he has rescued your life, give me a round of applause. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. 
it is over indeed in the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible says, the Son of God shall set you free. You are free indeed. You are free indeed. And by the simplicity of your heart, by the mercy of the Lord, by your pertinent heart, the siege is over in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And you are delivered in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We have talked about what sieges. He said it could be spiritual, it could be what? Physical. And we have been able to establish that this siege comes majorly as a result of sin or disobedience. Praise the Lord. Amen. It could be our sin. It could be the sin of our parents. It could be the sin of our forefathers. And because of the blood lineage, it's being traced to you. And you are being visited with iniquity. Praise the Lord. Amen. It could be as a result of the sins of the leader. It could be as a result of sin that we are collectively involved with. The Bible said, someone is sinning or committing any form of evil act. Do not beat the person God's speech. Don't say well done. And don't keep quiet. But once you do that, you are a partaker. May you not be a partaker in Jesus' name. Amen. And today, we want to look at the consequences of siege. We have established that siege is negative. Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm sure in the Bible we talk about the siege of Syria, isn't it? Today, if you watch the news, what Al Jazeera, you watch CNN, you will see the siege. Of Gaza. True of us. This is not in the Bible days. This is what is happening now. And the Bible is so alive. Everything the Bible talks about sick is what is happening there now. They are locked in. They can't go out, they can't come in. Millions of people are affected. Thousands are losing their life. Praise the Lord. Amen. Why? Because of sin of a particular group. Amat. True of us. Mm -hmm. There was peace, and they went to attack Israel. And now, there is what? War. War. So this might be called self-inflicted siege. Praise the Lord. It's not the sin of their father. It's the sin that they are causing by themselves. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And today, I want to assure you, every siege, over your life will be broken Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. But the Bible warned us, especially, especially the leaders, especially the what? Leaders. leaders. To make sure we live a decent life and make sure we put our children under control. If we don't, you bring the siege over your family and over the church. Praise the Lord. Amen. Our reference will be taken from what happened to Israel as a result of the sin of Eli children. Of course, you know that Eli happened to be the spiritual leader. Two of us, open your Bible to 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter 2. I'm going to be brief. We're not going to spend the whole day here. Praise the Lord. Are you in 1 Samuel chapter 2? Samuel is before the king. Praise the Lord. 1 Samuel chapter 2. I want you to, someone should read for me verse 22. Use the mind. Can you give him a mind? Somebody with a mind? Hold on. I need a mind, please. 
And I want you to read loud. Praise the Lord. If you can't read it, please give it to somebody else. Now Eli was very old and heard all that his son did unto all Israel, and how they learned with the women that assembly of all the doors of the tournament of the congregation. Praise the Lord. Amen. For emphasis says, let me read from here. So now Eli was very old. And he heard about everything his sons were doing to all Israel and how they were sleeping with the women who served at the entrance of the tent of the meeting. Are you a leader in the church like Eli, occupying a position of responsibility? It behoves of you to look at your children and ensure they live a righteous life. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. In chapter 3 of the same first Samuel, verses 1, verses 11 to 14, the Bible said, And the Lord said to Samuel, Watch, I am going to do something in Israel. I'm going to do something where? Israel. And that is why we need to be very careful and watch over the church. You have the responsibility to watch over your brother, over your sister. It was the children of Eli that committed sin. But the Lord said, if we do what? I'm going to do something in Israel that we shock those that hear it. Praise the Lord. Amen. It's not the entire Israel that sins. So if you say that it's not your business and you fold your hand, that's what we call collective captivity. May that not be your portion in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. At that time, I will do to Eli and his family everything that I promised. From the beginning to the end, everything I promised. Remember, the prophet said that the soul that did it, he shall die. And he said, if you cover your sin, you will not prosper. These are the profound word of God. No matter the type of sin, whether the sin of idolatry, whether the sin of uh, omission or commission, whether the sin of fornication and adultery, whether the sin of stealing, falsification of record. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Whether the sin of lies, there's no white lie, there's no blue lie, there's no gray lie. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Or the sins of cover up, you see evil. And you cover it up. You are an accessory to the sin. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, I told Eli I will punish his family. So it's not only the Israel. It's all, not only the congregation. The Lord said, I will punish his family. Because he knew his sons were evil. They acted without honor, but it did not stop them. So I swear to Eli's family, your guilt will never be removed yeah. by sacrifice or offering. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, how it affected Eli is because he knew it. He did nothing. They are children. And they will go out of this. Uh, their children, these are children, and uh, they will learn when they grow up. Immediately, you observe something that is inappropriate, deal with it. Talk to your neighbor and tell your neighbor, deal with it. Deal with it. <laughs> if you don't deal with it, it will grow, it will germinate, it will sprout, and the consequences will be too difficult to handle. 
May that not be your portion in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Who is Peter? He's a church leader, true of us. Yeah. It could be the pastor. As a pastor in the church, I have responsibility over my household, over my world. I shall preach the gospel of salvation, preach the gospel of prosperity, preach the gospel of deliverance. If I fail to look diligently unto my family, I fail God, true or false. Everything that I'm doing is inconsequential. Being a pastor is just a title. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The Bible of him that knoweth how to do good and doeth it not is a what? I may not be committing the sin of immorality. I may not be committing the sin of fornication. But if I know what is good and I choose not to do it, if I do not direct and guide my children properly, I'm committing sin against who? Against God. Same thing applies to you as you are seated here. What is your position in the church? Are you a departmental leader? Are you a deacon or a deaconess? Are you an evangelist? A teacher, so the school teacher. Are you a pastor, an apostle, or a bishop? If you don't correct and ensure there is peace and decadence in your home, if you don't lead them in the way of the Lord, you are playing into the garden. May that not be your portion in Jesus' name. Amen. And that is why today I want us to look at this. Who can be under a siege? Who can be under a siege? It's just a recap of that. We have said before. A family can be under a siege. If there is a sin in the lineage, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Whether by way of what the ancestors have done, or by way of what he has done, like the sin of Achan. You know what Achan did? He touched the forbidden thing. He stole two of us, and that brought siege over his family. The children of God lay siege when they identified that the sin was from him. The Bible said that they stole him, his wife, his children, and all that he had, including livestock, they were buried with stone. This is a siege he brought upon himself. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He partook in it. His family suffered it. Then the whole community and the nation suffered it. Because when they went to war, the promises of God that are supposed to be yea and amen in their life. Did not hold. <coughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. They were defeated by a very small town, small city called Ai. True of us. Yes, they carried the Ark of the Covenant. Yes, they believed, but God, there was sin in their life. And that is why, as a church, as individual, as a family, we need to do what? Examine our life. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Our God is faithful, is able to serve. Serve in the sense that you will personally act towards your deliverance. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You will personally engage in warfare with your what? Enemy. Because the Lord said, yes, I have no need to fight in this battle. Before the Lord will tell you you have no need to fight, you must live a righteous life. You must acknowledge Him. It. 
The Bible said the man was called Jabez because the mother said, I bear him in soul. But the Bible recorded, and Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. He lived a righteous life, that's the meaning. A life that is devoid of sin. Based on that, he could pray, O oh Lord, enlarge my post. He could pray, God, help me. Let it not grieve me that I'm serving you. It is an error for you to be serving the living God and you are grieved. To be grieved is to be sad. And what can cause sadness? So, calamities, failure, all these as a result of what? Now, we may ask ourselves, what are the different types of siege? What are the different types of uh, Siege. We have the siege of stagnation. Stagnation. You seem to be working. You seem to be doing well. But you are not moving from one level to the other. Year in, year out. You remain stagnant. Even when you make money, you put it in pocket that has holes. It does not be your portion. Mm -hmm. What your mates are achieving, accomplishing, you cannot achieve it. Praise the Lord. Unfruitfulness is a siege. Unfruitfulness. Right said that he that winneth so is wise. True of us. But you are being a Christian for 10 years, 20 years, you can't boast of one soul. You are unfruitful. Check the work of your hand. You are working in a wonderful company with wonderful remunerations. You don't have a land of your own. You don't have even any sort of mobility. If you don't have Jesus, you don't have anything. The event that Jesus answered nothing is because your life is not in Christ. You may be a church goer. There's a difference between a church goer and a Christian. Praise the Lord. Amen. And everything is not to be working for you. It's a siege. We that not be your portion in Jesus' name. Amen. We have a siege of sickness. A siege of sickness. Our sister testified that in the last 40 years, our mother, sorry, our father, that is 86 years old, he can only remember. She can remember only going to the hospital once. Once. Once in 40 years. Praise her Lord. Hallelujah. At 86, he doesn't use glasses. He talks like Moses of old. He said, as I was 40 years ago, so I am today. My strength is not diminished. And my height is not worth Some of us, we're 20, we're 30, we're 40. We are approaching 60. But we have changed glasses up to 30 times. May that not be your portion in Jesus' name. Amen. Search your life. Touch your life. After they have gone through the trauma of the desert, when they were distributing the land, a man said, Give me this mountain. He is able to conquer it. Why? Because he lives a life of dedication unto the Lord. He is not sick. If you are sick of this affliction, that affliction, and you're always in the hospital, always paying the money, 
I'm encouraging you to search your life. A siege of sickness has been laid against you. And that siege is broken. Amen. It's broken because the Lord God Almighty is in your midst. And the Bible tells you where that you go. He will do what? He will do good to you. Amen. He shed his blood on the cross of Calvary for your healing. He said, by his stripe, we are healed. You are healed in Jesus' name. Amen. It could be a siege of hatred. You don't know what happened. You don't know what is happening. You don't know what has happened. All you know is that no favor. Anywhere they see you, they frown against you. Could it be what you have done in the past or what has happened in your lineage? May the Lord deliver you in Jesus' name. Amen. It's a siege. It's a siege. I talk of the siege of stagnation. It's also linked to financial siege. Financial siege. Your thing could be you don't pay your tithe. Because you are robbing God. Because you are stealing. You brought the siege upon yourself. In Nehemiah, the Bible said they say it is no time for the house of the Lord to be built. He said that is why they work so hard and bring in so little. Check your life. Do what? Let there be self-examination. It could be academic siege. No matter how you read, you will not understand. Some people at the point of writing exams, they will have policy, only here. And they will not be able to do well. These are siege being laid against you by the enemy. May that not be your portion in Jesus' name. Amen. Search your life. If you are involved, or your life is characterized with all these things I've just mentioned, these are just few that I've listed out, it's a sign that you need deliverance. Over siege. And the blood of the Lamb will bring that deliverance in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. There is nothing too difficult for God to do. God did not create you to be stagnant. It did not create it to be limited. Because siege limits when a siege is laid upon or against a family, individual, or a nation. No freedom of movement. No freedom of association. You can't even express yourself the way you like. These are the aims and limitations of siege. <coughs> but I've come to announce to you, as the Lord liveth, this siege will be lifted. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord will fight for you. And you will do what? You will hold your peace. I fight for you. And you will hold your peace. So shall it be in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Limitation is not only physical, it could be spiritual. Limitation. It's not only I can't buy a vehicle. It's not only you can't marry. It's not only you are not having children. No, it could be spiritual. A siege is laid against you when you pray and there is no answer. It could be siege as a result of sin. But if I regard iniquity in my heart, if I pray, the Lord will not hear. I'm here to announce to you that this siege is broken. Yeah. Yeah. A siege that brings about frustration. These are the pain of siege. 
Success. Everything that you do, there is always a question mark. Even the people they just employ and they ask you to train, they end up becoming your boss. Talk to your neighbor and tell you what, may that not be your portion. Pray for your neighbor. Tell your neighbor, may that not be your portion. Touch your chest and tell yourself, that will be my portion. That will be my portion. In Jesus' name. Amen. Frustration. Frustration. Fear. Anxiety. These are the pains of siege. Defeat is pain, pain of siege. In any area that you have been defeated, may the Lord see you through Amen. and turn the situation around Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. The Lord does not create you to be limited because you serve an, a God that can never be limited. Praise the Lord. Amen. He is an illimited God. Can be limited by situation or circumstances. God cannot be limited. If God cannot be limited and you are serving that living God, you will not be limited. Amen. Every effort dragging up to limit you, the Lord will frustrate you. Amen. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus, I am come to announce to you there is a way out. Praise the Lord. There is what? There is a way out. And that is the purpose of this garden. That is the purpose of conceiving the thing. What is the way out of siege? What is the way out of siege? Very important thing. There must be what I call Spiritual mapping. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You need to sit down and consider your life. You need to sit down and consider your association. You need to sit down and consider the spirituality of your friends. If you are with Five liars. You are the sixth liars. Two of us. You are not into Yahoo Yahoo. But you have a friend that is into Yahoo Plus. Three of them. You are the fourth one. Two of us. Because of this evil spiritual connection they have, it will affect you. May that not be your portion. Amen. So in doing this, you choose your friend. You choose your association. You choose where you go to. Tell your neighbor, don't allow your friend to choose you. Your to choose, choose your friend. Choose your friend. That is very important. Because if you look at Psalm, the book of Psalm, Psalm 1, are you in Psalm 1? Yeah. Open to the book of Psalm. He said, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, in the counsel of your friends. Those your friends counseling you, how godly are they? They are perpetual liars. They always be in the club. They are womanizers. They do all manner of things, but you said that, no, as an adult, they can't influence you. They will influence you. Now show me your friend. And I will do what? I will do what? I tell you who you are. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Nor standing in the way of sinner, nor seated in the seat of this comfort. So you are encouraged to live what a righteous life. 
run away from any form of sin and iniquity. Don't mingle with people that are evil doers. He said, your delight should be in the law of the Lord. And in his law, you will meditate day and night. Then the Bible said, you shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth its fruit in its season. Its leaf also shall not wither. And whatsoever you do, the Bible said you will do what? Prosper. Whatsoever you do, you will do what? Prosper. Receive the grace to be prosper, Amen. to be prosperous Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Also, Number two, that's number one. Number two, the sins can be overcome by prophetic utterances. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Who gives prophetic utterance? He's the prophet. So by the hand of a prophet, you will do what? You will be established. By the hand of a prophet, you will do what? You will prosper. Said, let Reuben, let his men not be few. There was a siege placed against him by his what? father. It took the intervention of a prophet. Who is this prophet? Moses. He intervened on their behind, on their behalf. He said, This siege should be lifted. Reuben will not die. As a family, you will not die. Amen. As an individual, you will not die. Amen. The will and the wishes of the evil one, the enemy, will not prosper over you. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Then Elijah said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Paul said to the Lord, Tomorrow, about this time, a measure of five power shall be sold for a shekel, and two measures of a barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria. He prophesied that the siege will be broken. Was the siege not broken? Yes. There is a danger of unbelief. A danger of what? Unbelief. Doubt. Faithlessness. You will not allow the siege over your life to be lifted because of familiarity. Said so Jesus has no honor among his uh, brethren. Among them, he performed very little miracle except laying of hands. He said, Is he not uh, Dickie this? Is he not Pastor this? I know him now. It happened to Moses. His sister and his brother, as a result of over familiarity, they doubted him. True or false? They even murmured against him. True or false? But one day, they became lepers and they were thrown out of the camp. God said, Now I will choose. Who is my prophet? So I want to encourage every one of us sitting here. Let there be no over familiarity. Any word that comes from the pulpit, believe. And as you believe, the Lord will answer you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ brings hope and restoration. So when the Son of God said to faith, you are what? But before it can work for you, you must turn away from your sin. Forsake them, confess them. Praise the Lord. Amen. You must accept him as your personal Lord and Savior. Now, this is not about, I'm a Christian, I've been going to church for 20 years. Yet, you don't believe in the person of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Amen. If you don't believe, and you have some doubt, and you have not submitted your life unto him, and accept him as your personal Lord and Savior, you're not a Christian. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You may be a moralist. 
That does not make you what? A Christian. A Christian. May that not be your portion in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. There will be a divine intervention by the mercy of the Lord. You can be set free there. On his own, he said, I will have mercy on me. I will have mercy. The Lord said, I will remember the Davidic covenant. The covenant that I've had with David. When adventure, his son, his daughters, his children, sin. He said, I will do what? I will forgive them. That is at the Lord's instance. And the Lord's prerogation. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Mercy. May mercy be your portion. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. May the Lord have mercy upon you and your household. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Very importantly, you must live and walk by faith on a daily basis. That's a without faith. Without faith, without faith, it is impossible to please him. And faith is the opposite of fear. And what is fear? What is fear? There's a difference between fear and fright. You could be frightened. Praise the Lord. For that does not mean you are fearful, right? Fake evidence appearing real. It's like a mirage. You are traveling, you are driving on the ice field. In front of you, you are seeing the water. But there's no water there. By the time you get there, no water. But as a result of that water, you may be afraid, and you, you, you break, and you stop the vehicle. Praise the Lord, throw us, because you don't want to run into, yes. even when there is no rain. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. May that not be your portion in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Receive the grace to walk in faith. This Christianity is a work of faith. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You can't afford to turn back. You can't afford to doubt. If you want to be out of search, there must be faith. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And very importantly, you know, we talk about giving. We talk about giving. We talk about giving. Giving is very important. By sacrificial giving, you can be delivered from siege. Do you know that? In case you don't know, the people in the world, they know it. That's why the Babalawo will tell them to go and perform sacrifice. They are giving to a strange God. You don't know, in the spiritual realm, there are hierarchy. The Babalawo will simply make consultation. Ah, this power is big, is stronger than him. If you appease the power, then you ask to go and buy a uh, goat or ram, a pigeon. But you as a Christian, you don't need to do that because the blood of Jesus has liberated you. But when you give unto the Lord, when you give all actively and sacrificially, you receive your breakthrough. You don't know. Let's open to the book of Second Samuel. Second Samuel. I want everyone to open it. It's very important. Uh, when you open the scripture, it keeps you active and lively in the church. Praise the Lord. Second Samuel chapter. Chapter 24. Are we there? Yes. In verse 24, the Bible said, And the king said unto Arona, Nay, but I will surely buy it of thee at the price. Neither will I offer one offering unto the Lord my God 
of that which does not cost me nothing. Praise the Lord. So, David bought the threshing floor, the oxen for 50 shekel of silver. And David built an altar unto the Lord and offered burnt sacrifice and peace offering. So, the Lord was entreated for the land, and the plague, and the plague stayed from Israel. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Another portion you can look at that is interesting is after the flood. After the flood, the Bible said that Noah brought out clean things and offer it unto the Lord sacrificially. He gave unto the Lord. Praise the Lord. And the Bible said, and the Lord smelled a sweet sabbath. And the Lord said, as surely as I live, six times and harvest time, we never what? He said, for the Lord, I will not destroy this world again with water as I have done. Before that happened, he gave unto the Lord. Some of you that are very friendly with social media, and you listen to those people that say, don't pay tight, don't give, don't give to church, don't give to pastor. They are just eating your, uh, your, 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 your things for fun. And because of that, you are withholding. The Bible said, there are some that with older and tender to what? Poverty. May that not be your portion in Jesus' name. Amen. You can't give your time. You must pay it. I stand boldly to announce to you. If you don't pay it in the house of the Lord, you will pay it to the devil. Praise the Lord. I heard of a story of a vehicle traveling. And the thief entered. Among all of you, who pays his time? If you pay your time, we know who is a Christian today. Stand this side. If you don't pay, stand this side. Don't lie if you lie. And few of them moved to the side that they paid their time. And they left them. They robbed others. Can you imagine that? I wasn't there. I cannot uh, uh, you know, categorically say whether it's true or not. But that is what I had. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. May the Lord help you. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Number eight on my list, which is the final, is restitution. Restitution. The first one is spiritual mapping. One. The second one is prophetic utterances and declaration. The third one is prayer by prayer and fasting. By prayer and fasting. By prayer and fasting. That was why we were here on Wednesday. We had a mini church. Or when they did, the attendance was better than it used to be. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We declared a day of prayer and fasting. A pastor, one of our pastors, led him the prayers. By prayer and fasting, the Lord will change the course of the negative life. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Number four, by the blood of Jesus. His blood provides hope. And number five, I said, by divine intervention and the mercy of the Lord. So when you pray, you pray for what? Mercy. And the Lord will have mercy on you in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord will have mercy on you in Jesus' name. Amen. Number six, I said, walking by faith. Walking by faith. Walking by faith. You can't be born again if you don't believe that God has forgiven your sin. It's spiritual. You believe the word of God and you act and you walk in day. I mean in faith. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. May the Lord give you the grace to walk in faith in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Number seven, I talk about sacrificial giving. Sacrificial giving to the church. Sacrificial giving 
to your prophet, to the pastor. Sacrificial giving to your neighbor, whether it's a Christian or not. Yeah, we were told that uh, we should start from the household of faith. But don't say he's a Muslim and he doesn't go to church. He's a, he's a, he's a traditional. Then you have the opportunity to do good and you withhold it from the person. The Bible says, if you withhold good from whom it is due, it's a what? It's a sin. And there's something that is dangerous that brings about siege. Something that is dangerous. It's not part of what I wrote down. It just came to my mind as a ministry. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody has done you good. Somebody has done you good. And you pay the person back with easy. Mm. The Bible said, whosoever, whosoever rewarded good with evil. He said, evil shall never depart from that person's home. Self-inflicted siege. Someone has shown you love. Someone has been very helpful. Someone has provided. But you pay the person back with what? Evil. How do you pay the person back with evil? Gossip. Backbiting. Slandering. Character assassination. Denier. Then even when you yourself had the opportunity to do good to the person, you withheld your hand. Did that not be your portion in Jesus' name? Amen. Whosoever rewarded evil for good, the Bible says evil, go and Google it, check your Bible, evil shall not depart from his house. Did that not be your portion in Jesus' name? Amen. And the last one is restitution. That's number eight. Restitution. 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 We understand perfectly the concept of restitution, but we are afraid to do it. We are afraid to do it because it can bring us um, shame. Praise the Lord. Amen. We are afraid to do it because if I go to the office now, I tell them that I forged the certificate to enter, they might sack me, right? You are afraid because how am I going to tell the parent that I'm responsible for the death of their daughter? Why about it? But the Bible says, whosoever covered his sin shall not prosper. You have acquired a property illegally. As a Christian, you must make restitution. If you don't, siege will be against you. Praise the Lord. By the hearing, do I exercise myself to have a conscience void of offense towards God and man? Hearing, do I exercise myself? Hearing, do I exercise myself to have a conscience? If I say your conscience, they don't condemn you. God said, I won't condemn you either. Praise the Lord. But when your conscience is telling you that bonding pain does not belong to you, it belongs to Pastor Eddie. Then when you hear that Pastor Eddie has traveled, you bring it to the church that day, you found the pain. The day you know that he's coming to church, you keep it in your pocket. Ordinary pain. Do you understand? Restitution. Anything you have acquired illegally, you must reform so that your conscience will be clean. If the restitution involves life, you can still make the restitution, but you have to seek for guidance and counseling. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Meet with the pastor. They will pray for you. They will pray with you. They will guide you accordingly. Restitution must be done. You have four children. None of them belong to your husband. How do you make such restitution? <laughs> but the Bible says you must make it because that 
will come to all the days of your life. Praise the Lord. It is my prayer that the Lord will help you in Jesus' name. Amen. My joy will be for the siege over you to be over. And the siege will be over in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. After you have played your role, when you play your role, that means you are ready. If you are not ready to play your role, then you are not ready. May the Lord keep you ready in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. When the siege is over, I will just talk about it for five minutes, then we will pray. When the siege is over, <laughs> there will be joy. Praise the Lord. All the pain you have experienced, it will disappear. And the Lord will fill your heart with joy. The Lord is about to fill somebody's heart with joy. The Bible says, Tears may endure the night, but joy cometh in the morning. Psalm 30, verse 5. Say, For his anger endureth for, for a moment. In his favor is life. In his favor is life. May you enjoy the favor of the Lord in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Your joy is coming Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. The joy of the Lord will fill your heart in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Number two, limitations will be removed. Every form of limitation in your life, may the Lord remove it in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Anything that is limiting you, may the Lord remove it in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Your progress will be enviable. People will say, wow, positive envy. Negative envy leads to siege. If that question was asked during our Sunday school. You are doing good. You have not done anything bad. But you are being envy. Can this bring a siege? Did you all remember the question? Yes, the answer is yes. The answer is yes. In the book of Genesis, the Bible said that Isaac reactivated the well of his father. But they contended against him. He moved from there. He dug another well. They strove with him. He moved again. He dug another well. They would tell him. Until such a time, he dug one, and no one strove with him. And he said, The Lord has made way for us. The Lord will make way for you. Amen. Every form of striving against you will end in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. The Lord will open doors that no man can shut. In the mighty name of Jesus, Amen. limitation will be removed. In the mighty name of Jesus, Amen. the Bible says that the past of the righteous is as a shining light that shineth more and more unto what? A perfect day. So shall it be in your life. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. You will have fulfillment in every aspect of your life. The Lord will give you fulfillment. Amen. Maritally, you will be fulfilled. Amen. Business wise, you will be fulfilled. Amen. You will be fulfilled. Your relationship will not come sour. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. The devil will not have occasion against you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Fulfillment in all aspects of your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. The Lord will remove defeat and shame from your life. No more defeat, no more shame in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. No more shame in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Everything that brings shame upon you, the Lord will deal with it in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. It's not Mine. The Lord has bid me to bring this to you. And as you are obedient, and you are willing, receive the grace to be the dwellers of the world. Amen. Receive the grace to eat the good of the land. Amen. Receive the grace for your life to end well. Amen. Receive the grace for the Lord to remove shame and limitation from your life. 
In the name of God the Father. Amen. In the name of God the Son. Amen. And the Holy Spirit. Amen. Rise on the faith. Rise on the faith and go to the Lord. That the Lord will give you the grace to be the doers of His word. The message has come in a way that pleases the Lord. That the Lord will strengthen you. That the Lord God Almighty will send you refreshment, supply from His mountain. Talk to the Lord. That every siege in your life will be over. In the mighty name of Jesus. Every siege in your life will be over in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. The Lord will deliver you. Amen. The Lord will set you free Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I want the gospel light to give us that song they sang at the beginning of the sermon. I want you to sing that song. It is the Lord that can rescue your life. And I want the church of God to follow them. Even as you run up this service.